a 14-year-old Calvin Cambridge, better known by his stage name as Lil Bow Wow, has a goal of becoming a famous basketball player and competing against the best in the NBA. But in a competition that is dominated by giants with unmatched physical ability, Calvin's modest height and weak skills make this a far-fetched fantasy. He simply cannot compete. Or do you think he can? The moment that Calvin was given some magical pair of old faded sneakers with the initials MJ short for Michael Jordan, he made the transition from playground pranks to NBA superstardom. Ever since then, the little kid's life hasn't been the same. Today, we shall recap a 2002 American sports comedy film titled Like Mike. In the opening scene, we are introduced to an orphanage that Calvin Cambridge refers to as home is also an inhabitant for two of his closest friends namely Muff and Reg Stevens. Calvin Cambridge was raised at the orphanage since he lost both of his parents as an infant. As the youngest of the three, and as the person with whom he shares an uncommonly close relationship, a rivaling colleague named Ox places an unusually high amount of teasing on Calvin. Calvin is greatly teased and his life is not an easy one to live but guess what? He stands up and claims he's just height deficient but he's alright. Much as many claim Calvin can never be adopted by any parent. As the Los Angeles Knights competes in the National Basketball Association NBA, every orphanage is required to make a chocolate sale following the conclusion of the orphanage's home games in order to satisfy the stringent requirements of Stan Bittleman, the director of the facility. The orphanage will get the revenues from the sale, a parody of the Los Angeles Clippers. After meeting with the team's coach, Calvin learns that the coach is pleased with both his basketball knowledge and his honesty regarding the chocolates. The coach expresses this satisfaction to Calvin but he refuses to charge the coach. The head coach is overjoyed by Calvin's performance in each of these areas. As a direct result of this, the coach has come to the conclusion that he will provide Calvin with a pair of tickets to the upcoming game. Calvin goes back and tells his colleague that he's gonna get adopted soon and everybody laughs at him. Who can adopt such a kid like you? As Calvin prepares to dodge his history homework, a sister Tracy who happens to be his teacher, grants him an old pair of sneakers with the letters MJ, inscribed on the upper of one of the shoes after digging through a donation box at a thrift store. He asks Calvin to try it on and mention that the shoes belong to a previous owner. These are the sneakers that young Michael Jordan wore and played in when he was a basketball player. After gaining control of the sneakers, a gangster by the name of Ox takes them without permission and throws them over a high-tension power wire in a fit of jealousy. Calvin believes the sneaker can do much for him so he doesn't let it go. He wakes up in the middle of the night, together with his friends Reg and Muff, Calvin embarks on a move to rescue his adorable sneaker. When Calvin ventures out into the stormy night to recover them, he is hit by lightning, which is his direct cause of his loss of consciousness as a result of the occurrence. The lightning hits the sneakers as well and this could have been the first mark to his life transformation. Following the invitation by the Knights coach, Calvin and his buddies make the decision to attend a basketball game between the Knights and the Minnesota Timberwolves as one of the activities that they will participate in. This basketball competition is going down in Los Angeles. Tracy Reynolds, the outstanding player on the team, is getting ready for a challenge that will take place during halftime once the second quarter comes to a close. A call comes into the number that was put on Calvin's ticket, and he has a conversation with Tracy all by himself. Calvin is so excited to meet Tracy Reynolds, and he begins to make silly and kids jazz. Calvin has to hold a contest with Tracy Reynolds. They both have 60 seconds and whoever makes the first shot wins. Unfortunately, the little 14-year-old had just beaten the legendary Tracy Reynolds. It doesn't end there. The kid goes ahead and makes his second and third shot. Unbelievable. This left everybody amazed but worse of all, it embarrassed Tracy Reynolds like crazy. By first putting the ball through the basket and then allowing it to bounce off the backboard, Calvin is able to successfully accomplish a slam dunk that ultimately wins the game for him. A standing ovation is given to Calvin by Reg and the rest of the audience when he finally concludes his remark. This occurs after a drawn-out period of startled stillness in which no one talked for a considerable amount of time. Calvin receives a $5,000 offer of a one-day contract from the Knights, 
and because he is intrigued in the opportunity, he accepts the terms and condition of the deal. The head coach broke the news to him as he was getting ready for his first game with the team that he would not be playing in the game. Calvin is super excited to be playing in the Knights team, and he together with his friends Reg and Muff talk about how accidentally Calvin became super great at basketball. He whispers to them that he has no idea but all he knows is that before he had the magical sneakers, he wasn't as great as he currently is. Calvin is now with the Knights and out of curiosity, he asks the coach for the main purpose why he was signed. Unfortunately, the coach lets him know he's only for show. During the course of the game that the Knights are playing against the San Antonio Spurs, head coach Wagner makes the decision to put Calvin into the game for the final quarter of play. Tracy and Calvin do not get along, and during the play before Calvin could put on his magical sneaker again, the game doesn't seem as nice as expected. It doesn't take long before their team as a result of Calvin's great play begin to lead and eventually won. As a form of recognition and appreciation for the leadership role that he played in his team's successful comeback attempt against the Spurs, which resulted in a victory for his side, an offer of a contract for the next season was extended to Calvin. A little kid he is, after the win everybody now wants an autograph with him much as nobody wanted to even look at him before that. Right now, even the orphanage manager who earlier disliked him, now loves him like crazy. In a flight for a play, the coach approaches Tracy Reynolds and tells him that since Calvin is still a kid, Reynolds should act as a mentor and guide for him in this respect until he becomes a mature basketball player. Because of the contributions that Calvin has made to the club, the Knights have become one of the teams in the league that has the highest degree of team cohesiveness. This is a direct outcome of Calvin's work. Well, maybe we should say, a direct work of the magical pair of sneakers. Meanwhile, before Tracy could go out for a date with his girlfriend, in an attempt to avoid going with Calvin, he dupes him to make unlimited food order. When Tracy and Calvin come back together with his girlfriend, Calvin is very exhausted from the too much food he had and funny enough Tracy's girl seemed to like Calvin. Calvin apologizes and requests Tracy to say a prayer with him before he goes to sleep. At night, Calvin sleeps and snores like crazy. This makes Tracy to have a sleepless night, and in the morning, Calvin goes ahead and starts yapping about the previous night. As a result of the problems that Calvin generates for himself in attempting to prevent Tracy from violating his curfew, Tracy's perception of Calvin as a person starts to shift and change. He begins to start considering meeting Calvin to be better than bad, much as the little kid beat him in the game. Calvin approaches fellow players for autographs and nobody wants an autograph with him but, after the game, this changes. Biddleman learns that it's Calvin's sneakers that make him a great player. When Tracy is going to acquire some medication for his allergies, Calvin sneaks in his car and the duo go together. The duo seems to be getting alone much as Calvin continuously gets teased to stop rapping and focus only on playing basketball instead. On their way, Calvin asks Tracy why he lied about his dad being dead and Tracy doesn't want to talk about it. The nurse gives Tracy his medicine unfortunately Tracy takes it without following the right prescription. He dosses and passes out. Now, the little Calvin must take the wheel to take both of them back home. Because the kid is little, he makes multiple hits before they could arrive back home. After having been helped reach home successfully, by the little Calvin. In the morning after Reynolds wakes up and on their flight for another game, Calvin receives sincere appreciation from him, and their bond seems to be growing even stronger. Meanwhile, Calvin is seen doing his school homework with his friends Muff and Reg. He does this alongside playing for the Knights. Meanwhile, Biddleman strikes a contract with the club that states he will get all of Calvin's money until Calvin reaches the age of 18 or is adopted. The agreement further states that he will receive the money regardless of whether or not Calvin is adopted. Back at the orphanage, now that the kid is shining in light, everybody wants to adopt him. Several arrangements with different kinds of people in an attempt to get the right parent for him was made and Calvin doesn't seem to like any of them. Calvin goes to meet Tracy at his home. His main intention is to get help with his geometry test coming next week. He also wants to discuss with Tracy about how he doesn't like arranged parent for him. He also talks about how his best friend Muff is mad at him. 
Tracy teaches him and also asks him to call his best friend to come along before they could both learn and have fun together. Calvin and his closest buddy spend the entirety of their day learning and speaking with Reynolds while they are at Reynolds' residence. Only after that do they begin painting on faces and walls before they engage in swimming and more fun, having grown without a father in his life. And after Calvin learns that Reynolds has a father but doesn't talk to him, Calvin makes an attempt to try to restore the perishing relationship between Reynolds and his father. Calvin makes an arrangement for Tracy to meet and at least start talking to him. Tracy doesn't like the idea and strongly forbids Calvin from doing so. While Calvin is meeting his new alleged parent, Biddleman's condition of anxiousness is getting steadily worse as the second option gets closer and closer to being fulfilled. Because of this, he decides to borrow Calvin's shoes and then place a bet against the Knights for the sum of $100,000. Meanwhile, Tracy has been thinking so much about Calvin unfortunately, Calvin is soon going to be adopted by his new parents. He wanted to let Calvin know he wants to adopt him but could not. The game is about to start but, Muff has already been forced and gave Biddleman the sneakers. In an attempt to get the sneakers back, they tie and request him to give him the sneakers. Fortunately after the kids are successful in persuading Ox and his associates that Biddleman is self-centered, Ox takes the shoes out of the safe that Biddleman uses and puts them in his own possession. The youngsters make their way up to the playing field while donning Calvin's sneakers. Biddleman is able to get away after a successful attempt, and he then dispatches men to go after the shoes in an effort to get them back, but they are unable to do so. Calvin makes it back to the arena with the shoes after the third quarter of the game has concluded, just as Vince Carter and the Toronto Raptors are cruising to an easy victory against the Knights with a score of 80 to 59. During the fourth and final quarter of the final game of the regular season, the head coach takes the choice to send Calvin into the game, and the Knights begin making a comeback almost immediately after he enters the game. A pile on that occurred towards the end of the game, when the Knights were behind the Raptors by 103 to 102, resulted in the destruction of Calvin's footwear. This occurred when the score was 103 to 102 in favor of the Raptors, and this means the Knights were in a situation where they were likely to lose the game. Calvin, who does not have the shoes and with deep fear expresses a desire to resume to this normal childhood life he further informs the squad that this will be his final game, regardless of whether or not the Knights advance to the postseason. Calvin's decision is final regardless of whether or not the Knights advance to the postseason. The other players on the squad are taken aback by Calvin's announcement that he would be retiring from the team. During the play that proved to be the deciding factor in the game, Calvin was effective in using a pump fake to deceive Carter into making a jump pass to Tracy. The victory of Calvin's squad in the game was a direct result of this move. After Tracy makes the game-winning jumper for the Knights in the very last second of regulation to lead the Knights to a victory against the Raptors with a score of 104 to 103, the Knights will be making their very first appearance in the postseason. This victory will lead to the Knights' first ever appearance in the playoffs. After they had been out from the orphanage for some time, Tracy decided to take Calvin and Murph under her wing. While she found another family for Reg regardless of this, the four of them maintained consistent communication with one another. Since Biddleman did not have enough money to pay off the bet, he fled into hiding, either to escape being killed by his goons or to avoid being captured by the Los Angeles Police Department and the Knights are the ones who are currently providing financial support for the orphanage. It is possible that Biddleman went into hiding in order to escape being slain by his goons or to prevent being apprehended by the Los Angeles Police Department. I hope you enjoyed the movie. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more movies like this one, please subscribe. Take care, and I will see you in the next movie. Peace.